All right, I think we're working. Let's get our eraser. And we should be live. All right. Hello, I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide. And in this video, we're going to talk about movies that get you fluent, get you fluent. All right, I made a... Jinpo ga yatte kita ne. Ohayou gozaimasu. All right, uh, so in this video, I actually made a, a recent video talking about books that get you fluent, and people were asking me about movies as well. Uh, and in general, when I'm recommending people watch movies, uh, usually I recommend you watch things you enjoy. Uh, but in this video specifically, I want to talk about the kinds of movies that get you fluent because they give you lots of naturally varied review. Now, naturally varied review, this means you're learning vocabulary in different ways, Maybe you're hearing different people speak the same thing, or you're hearing the same thing from different people, uh, or you're hearing uh, like it could be something in different tenses, but the point is you're reviewing the vocabulary. Because usually what happens is learners will try to learn more vocabulary, so they want to study more, they watch more videos on YouTube about how to learn more vocabulary, but they're not actually becoming more confident speakers. The reason is they know more vocabulary, but they don't know that vocabulary very well. So they might watch a video, they forget what they learn, or they try to study or memorize some vocabulary. Uh, so that's really the biggest problem people have. So in this video, I want to talk about specifically the kinds of movies I recommend people watch if you want the movie to help you get fluent without you really doing anything. <laughs> So usually what happens, like I'll get people complaining, uh, like if you imagine like a, a regular movie, you watch a movie, maybe this is two hours or whatever, uh, or three hours. So you watch a movie and after the movie is finished, you would rarely do anything with that content again. You would probably not read the novel right after that uh, or watch some videos talking about the movie or something. Uh, so the point is lots of people will continue watching lots of movies and they wonder why they're not getting fluent. It's because they're, they're kind of they're learning more words, but they're not going deep with that vocabulary. So they don't know those vocabulary, like the words or the grammar or whatever, as well as natives do, all right? So instead of watching a movie where like a, a typical movie has, uh, like you have a, like we call this a character arc. So something happens to the character, they go on some kind of journey or something, and then they finally, you know, reach some conclusion at the end. And usually it's a series of events that happen, and then typically there it's it's just a, a series like this. You, you don't really have any repetition in the movie itself. So the only way to review the movie really is to go back and read the transcript again, or you know watch I don't know something like related to this. Like you watch a movie about whatever. So you watch I don't know Independence Day, the movie, and then you go to YouTube and then watch videos of people talking about that. But what I'm suggesting you do instead is watch movies that actually give you review in the movie itself, okay? So rather than trying to watch something and get the information one time, you're actually reviewing within the movie itself, all right? And I often tell people that I can get them fluent because fluency really comes from the input you get rather than you trying to practice things by yourself. The only kind of practice or actual speaking comes after you've already got lots of input, all right? So what I call understandable messages or just information you understand all in English without needing translations or subtitles or whatever, all right? So today we're going to talk about different kinds of movies that have this formula, okay? So again, it's like these movies are like very famous, very popular classic movies, but they also fit very nicely into a way that native speakers speakers or uh, non-native speakers can enjoy because they have uh, like, it's like a really good uh, kind of repetition in the movie. All right. Everyone, everyone on board so far. I want to go through these and I'll go back and check questions later, but I wanted to make this a pretty quick video, at least at the beginning. Uh, so let's go through a couple of different kinds of movies that follow this format. All right. So the first kind that we have 
And remember, the point of this is to review things again and again so that you remember it, so that you use it fluently and confidently. Uh, the first kind of movie is the time loop. Now the time loop movie, uh, this is where usually a character experiences something again and again and again, and usually in slightly different ways. So they might have, again, this is called a character arc. So the character arc, the arc of the movie is what happens to the character. Do they grow? Do they change in some way? But in a time loop, a time loop movie, often the same thing will happen again and again and again. And this is a great way for you to hear that vocabulary again and again and again in the same movie. All right, so it's almost like watching a bunch of mini movies at the same time. And so let's cover a few examples of this. So one of my favorite movies, the first one, is Groundhog Day. Give this a capital letter here, Groundhog Day, Groundhog Day. Let me know if you have seen this movie before, but it's a very famous movie about a time loop. The basic story is that a guy moves to, or he's not moving, but he, uh, he's a weatherman and he travels to a small town in, uh, I think it's Philadelphia, uh, and the, the lead character is Bill Murray. So maybe you've seen him in Ghostbusters or other, other popular movies. Uh, but Groundhog Day by itself is, is like a holiday kind of in the United States where a, a little groundhog will, will come out of his little, little hole and he looks around and if he sees his shadow, then there will be more like a longer winter or whatever. It's kind of, a, kind of a fun holiday thing about whether we will have an early spring or early uh, or like continuing to have a, a late winter. So what happens in Groundhog Day is the character gets stuck in a time loop of experiencing the same day over and over again, and he has to figure out how to break the time loop. Now what happens is obviously you get like he goes, he wakes up and he goes down and gets breakfast or whatever, and that happens a couple of different times. And so you get to see him interacting with these people again and again and again. Usually in, in these kind of time loop movies, the first time loop, it's just a regular day and then they wake up, they wake up again, you know, in the same bed or something like that and they're wondering what's going on with the day. And so they, they review those same kinds of things and over time they get to play with the kind of the experience and so they can start changing things around. But the really nice thing about these time loop movies is that you again get this same experience with the same vocabulary or at least a similar situation with uh, related vocabulary that's talking about these different things. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So Groundhog Day, highly recommend that movie. Just a very good example of a time loop. This is a comedy uh, and the English is not difficult to understand. It's a really good uh, popular movie. Again, because you get to review again and again in the movie itself, all right? So let's take a look at another time loop movie. Uh, this one is a bit more recent. This is Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. So Edge of Tomorrow, I think this is actually based on a uh, maybe a Japanese comic. Um, and in Edge of Tomorrow, this is actually, it's a Tom Cruise movie. And the main character, he is, it, like the whole movie is about a time loop of how long he can stay alive because the aliens that are attacking the planet, they cause him to relive the same day over and over again. So there are actually two characters that relive the same day, but this is another example just like Groundhog Day where you have a main character, he's experiencing the same things over and over again. And so like you get to see, ah, like, I remember that, so I understand that vocabulary. You can anticipate that vocabulary and then they change it slightly. So he might say, hey, how are you? And the other guy says, oh, hey, how are you? But the next day he says, like, what are you doing? And the other guy says, you know, something else. So it's the same situation, but the vocabulary has changed a little bit. So it's a really good, naturally varied review for you to understand the vocabulary from the situation. So you see the same situation again and again, and how do they change things? All right. I don't want to go. I don't really need to go into like the plot of all these movies. But basically, uh, the time loop one is the first kind of movie that I recommend. There are others. Uh, I'll give you one more. What's another good time loop movie that I had? Uh, 51st Dates is another one. 
is an Adam Sandler movie, 50, 51st. Now this is a little bit different from a typical time loop where a character is experiencing this one. In 51st Dates, the main character has, uh, like he, he finds a girl that he likes, but she has amnesia, amnesia, amnesia. Amnesia, amnesia. This means like she has a short-term memory problem and she forgets everything. So she wakes up, you know, the next morning and doesn't remember what she did the previous day. All right. So he, this guy goes on like a, a bunch of different dates with his character, uh, and you will see like lots of different people uh, in the program. All right. So or in the movie, I should say. Uh, so again, another good example, the, t the time loop idea is similar, but notice how like they go on one date and another date and another date, and it's your chance to get used to the characters, but hear a lot of the same vocabulary and, and understand it from the situation rather than trying to learn it through translations or you know, use subtitles in your native language. All right, any questions about that? I'm going to watch this movie tomorrow today. Yes, enjoy Edge of Tomorrow. All of these are things like you can watch them and I recommend you watch them more than once. <laughs> so after you finish the movie, go back and watch it again. Or you could go to YouTube and watch people talking about it. So you could find reviews of these movies or read about it somewhere. But any anytime you're getting naturally varied review where you're looking at that information from different angles or from different perspectives, that's going to help you get flowing. All right, so the first kind the movie that I recommend is the time loop. All right. Any any questions about that? Hopefully this should make sense. This should be pretty easy. All right. What are we going to talk about next? All right. The next kind of movie that I recommend is you have the same event, same event, but different, different perspectives. So the same event, but different perspectives. So this might mean there's, it could be a true story or a fake, you know, whatever, the, just a story created for the movie. Uh, but the idea here is that you have one thing, so one event, and different people are experiencing it or talking about it in different ways. All right. So a similar idea might be uh, instead of one event, like the exact same event, like I don't know, some, there's like a big plane crash or a big earthquake or something like that and you watch how people deal with that. Uh, a similar thing is like how do different, different people deal with graduation or something. All right, so you might have like different kids graduating college and uh, like in each one of those you could even watch like a few movies about that idea. All right, but the point is it's a similar situation. What is the kind of vocabulary people talk about for that kind of movie? All right, so instead of watching just some random movies, you're actually getting something and getting the review you need without you know, having to practice or do anything. All right, so same event, different. Uh, let's see, what did I have for this one? Uh, so the first example I had for this one, movie I enjoy, and this is based on a true story as well. This is The Big Short. The Big Short. This is about the financial crisis in 2008, I believe, uh, and talking about the housing uh, crisis and how it happened. And so you have the, the basic, here's like the big event that's happening and we're talking about it from different perspectives. So you get to see different people talking about it. How does it affect these people? What are these people saying? What are these different people saying about this same thing? Okay. Any questions about that? Should be pretty easy. Again, as I go through these, it's more important for me to tell you the kinds of things you should do, and you can find more movies about that. You can even just go to, I don't know, like Google or even chat GPT and just say, hey, like, tell me some more movies that are like this, okay? So, so far we've had uh, the time loop, and now we've got same event, different perspective. Uh, and another one here, I'll give you two more. Another, uh, so this is a popular, more recent one, but two older ones. First is 12 Angry Men. Now, 12 Angry Men, this is great, especially for language learners, because we have, it's about a uh, murder trial 
uh, where we have a, a jury. So the jury of uh, 12 men are in a room. It's just, it's just like in a room talking for two hours. All right, so there's no action or anything that you have to follow. It's, it's just watching a bunch of different people talk about this same event. All right, 12 Angry Men. I believe it was based on a play, uh, but it was, it was a movie, I think, in 19, when was that? 1957. 1957. So it's, uh, I think it's actually in black and white. Actually, I don't remember. Uh, but it's one of my favorite movies, even though I can't remember if it's in color or black and white. Uh, but I love the story. And uh, again, it's, it's a really interesting, I, I don't want to even like spoil the plot of these movies. But if you, I read like all of these movies that I'm recommending, like these are things I've personally seen. There are other examples of other movies that like have time loops or whatever. Uh, but these are just ones that I enjoy that I thought you would enjoy as well. So 12 Angry Men, you have a court case and 12 jurors who are talking about that. And so how do we have these different, uh, you know, like how do people talk about like the different, uh, I don't know, the situation or whatever, and how do they feel differently about it? So one person says, like, well, that guy is guilty, but that guy is innocent, all right? So did he commit the crime? Did he do the bad thing or did he not? And so it's a really interesting thing where, again, you have an arc to the story, but you're still getting lots of different perspectives as people learn and kind of think more uh, about that. All right, another interesting movie, another kind of crime thriller movie. The Usual Suspects. The Usual. The Usual Suspects. Now this is a similar idea where we have, again, a particular event that happens, and then we have a couple of different people actually telling stories about it. So there are, uh, I think, five guys that are, that are caught and they're being uh, examined at a police station uh, actually, I think it's just it's one guy, but he's kind of giving uh, like some different stories about that. But basically, you have you're trying to figure out what's happening, what's real, what's not. But again, it's one thing, and we have a couple of different people, different perspectives talking about that same event. All right, everybody getting this? Notice how again we want to be reviewing within the movie itself because. We will be lazy and not think to review the movie anyway, so we want the movie to review for us automatically. <laughs> okay, all right. So this is same event uh, or different perspectives, or you might have like different, you know, different people like at different times of their life talking about different things. There are variations on this idea. All right. Next, I want to talk about doing the same thing. So the same thing in different ways. So the same thing in different ways. The same thing in different ways. So one example of this is the movie Home Alone. This is a small boy who's been left at his house while his parents and family go off to France for a Christmas vacation. Uh, and so he's home and he has to protect his house. And there are two robbers that try to come into his house. And so there are a couple different instances like the same thing, the same situation as these robbers are trying to get into his house. And how does he deal with them in different ways? Okay. Yeah, so this is a popular movie, but again, thinking about it like a language learner, if you think, well, I'm not just kind of watching the movie, I'm a bit more active, like, oh, look at that, here's the same situation, and then some different ways or some different vocabulary or whatever that's talking about that. So how do I stop these bad guys from coming into my house? And so you see all these different examples of the different things uh, that the boy does to stop people from going into his house. All right, very simple. Home Alone. Uh, another one, this is a, another very popular older movie. This is The Great Escape. The Great Escape. This is a World War II movie. Uh, it's very entertaining though. Where it's a group of uh, different soldiers who are in a, in a camp, so in a German uh, I think it's a prisoner of war camp, and then all the different ways they try to escape 
from the prisoner prisoner camp. <laughs> so you've got like they try like one thing and it doesn't work and they try something else and it doesn't work. And so you have lots of these examples where again the same situation but they're dealing with it in different ways. Okay? Same situation dealing with it in different ways. Another example I give you uh, is Ocean's 11. I just thought of this right now, but it's a similar kind of thing. So Ocean's 11, Ocean's 11, this is like trying to rob a casino. So people are trying to steal money from a casino and they have to do this in a couple of different ways. I think they rob like three different casinos or something. But again, it's the same situation. How are they talking about that? How can you hear about this in the same information all within the same movie? So how can you get lots of review within the movie itself? Okay. Hopefully this makes sense. This should be pretty easy. These are all variations on the same idea, but they're all giving you review in the same thing. All right, last one. I'll just give you a few more quick examples. Uh, this is about like repetition, so like repeating things. We'll just say repeating. So repeating things or repetition in daily life. Now, I gave the example before of 12 angry men. This is, it's actually just 12 men in a room and talking about things. Uh, and in a similar way, you don't need to have a really exciting movie uh, to, to learn a lot of vocabulary in a native way. The main idea is that we can take something simple uh, like the movie Office Space. And you can hear a lot of the characters that are getting, uh, like they're hearing, just being in an office, hearing the same phone call answered the same way, or all the things that they just don't want to do. You hear lots of vocabulary like uh, TPS reports. So a guy will come up and say, hey, where's your TPS report? Where's your TPS report? Where's your TPS report? So different people will come up and ask the character for the same thing. And the joke is that it's just some stupid thing that nobody wants to do. It's part of office culture like that. And so this movie is making fun of that kind of thing, all right? So again, when you're watching something like this, you don't need to have like an exciting movie about traveling to space or something. It's much better to watch something like this where you actually, as a learner of the language, you can learn a lot about the culture, you can learn about the people, and understand, oh, okay, these are the kinds of things that happen in this culture or in this situation. All right? Any questions? I think we're moving along here. Look at that. We've only been going for 22 minutes, and I'm almost finished. Uh, then I'll come back and answer questions. But let's see. Uh, the last one I wanted to give that's another example of this kind of thing, another popular movie, is The Truman Show. Another show or another movie about a man who, who thinks he's like living real life in a small town, but it's actually him living under a giant dome and it's just a TV show where everyone else is working there. So he doesn't realize that, uh, but we want to make sure, okay, like, like he, like they're all trying to stop him from understanding what's happening in the movie. But you notice as a TV show, they have kind of lots of things that recur. So some things that happen again and again. The Truman Show, it gives you a really good, this is a Jim Carrey movie. It's a funny movie as well, a good comedy. Uh, and if you enjoy comedies, you will like this in the same way uh, that like Groundhog Day is. It's kind of similar like that. So a guy, he's living in a world and trying to figure out like, there's something wrong with the world and how does he break out of that world? And at the end, well, I won't tell you what happens if you have not seen the movie, but uh, like the other movies I have recommended, uh, I would recommend you watch this one again. Now, if you have seen any of these movies already, I highly recommend you watch them again because you will be thinking more like a, a language learner and be a bit more active in your watching, all right? So as you're looking at these movies, you should enjoy them as well, all right? So remember, uh, the thing that really stops a lot of people from speaking is not the size of their vocabulary, it's how well they know the vocabulary, okay? So you might know a lot of words, but if you forget things in conversations or you struggle to remember what you want to say, it's because you don't really know the vocabulary as well as you think you do. You really want to get to the native level uh, where you're trying to learn things and understand things all the same way a native does. 
Okay, and that's when you start speaking fluently. So you don't you don't have to go out and practice a lot of speaking with people. What you should do is get lots of naturally varied review. So whether you're watching these kinds of movies, or if you were you know like learning with me, like I do in Fluent for Life, uh, or if you were. Uh, you know, again, anytime you're, you're really being like active about how you review your information. So you might watch something and then watch a movie or something about that same topic. You might take a bunch of like a whole day just focusing on a particular topic. Okay. You will get this naturally if some big event happens in the world, like there's a major election in some place or, you know, whatever, there's a natural disaster. You will hear about it from your friends and family. You will hear about it in the news. You will hear about it like in newspapers or magazines or something. Uh, and then you will learn more about that thing naturally. But you can create this for yourself. So what I did to make sure I can get you fluent even if you don't speak, this is what we do in Fluent for Life. So we really want to help you understand things like a native by giving you lots of naturally varied review. So we don't tell you something just one time. You have to hear it again and again in different ways from different people, and that's how you get fluent automatically. All right? Now, there should be uh, lots of other movies, and you might even have other recommend, uh, recommendations. You can feel free to put those in the chat. But these are, again, things I recommend, things I've enjoyed. Uh, and I've watched these again and again. And also, they're very good because other native speakers have seen them too. These are popular movies. Uh, maybe like the older ones, like The Great Escape and uh 12 angry men maybe more recently people might not know about them uh, there might be some actual remakes of these movies that's another good thing you can do when you're watching a movie uh, so often movies that were popular 20 years ago people will remake the movie again all right so they will make it like change the characters or the setting so like a, a, a movie about stealing something like the italian job that was a movie and then it was made into a movie again and there are lots of like movies like that where people think it's the first one but actually this is the, there there was a, a more or like an older original version of that same movie so like the the movie i am legend uh by or with will smith so that's like that's had like i think three or four different versions all right so the omega man i think is like the original one uh, but like when you have a popular movie like people will remake these again and again so you could watch those same movies that are talking about something and see like what are what are the similarities or what are the differences but again the the main idea is that we want to review things as much as possible until we understand them so you might see something one time and get it automatically i try to give things if i'm teaching vocabulary to try to help you right away but we still often need to have review just so we remember those things and rather than trying to repeat the same flash card just on a different day okay i'm going to look at this in 10 minutes and then you know two hours or something we really should be looking at it in different ways in different situations so i might be reading a comic book and <clears throat> and i hear that vocabulary or i read that vocabulary and then i hear it on a tv show and then I think, oh, yeah, look at that. I've got, like, this really interesting, uh, like, vocabulary that I'm learning. And, and like, I'm, I'm understanding it like a native rather than trying to learn it like a student. All right? So that was it for this lesson. Look at that. I kept that to under 30 minutes. Now, I'm not necessarily in a hurry today. I guess I could be, but uh, let me see here. I'm going to go back through chat to see if anybody has any questions. All right. But hopefully this makes sense. All right, let's see here. But good to see everybody here. Let's see here. Good morning from Brazil, Thailand, Pakistan. Let's see. Oh, my favorite teacher. Good to see you again, Shark. Everybody here. Oh, in Fukuoka. Fukuoka, you do. Not there. Look at you. Look at that. Using English. Congratulations. Awesome. Uh, you are super califragilistic expialidocious. <laughs> I drew in everybody from Morocco, movies and TV series. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hello, sir. I'm a big fan of you. really like the way you used uh, your use to teach English. You can say, like, the way I teach English. Here, one second. Do something quickly. All right, I'm back. All right, making sure this was working here. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. 
forgive me, I, I like to like say something while I'm reading these comments, especially if you're, sometimes I will be listening to a podcast or something, and when I don't hear people speaking, I think something's wrong with the connection. <laughs> So I know some people might be just listening to these videos rather than watching them. Uh, Trends is a little sorry. I'm a big fan of you. Really like the way that you're. Oh, okay. So the way you can say the way you teach. Like I like the way you teach. All right. Uh, let's see. From Rio de Janeiro, Egypt. Uh, let's see. Julian's here again. Nice to see people. I love this movie. Yeah, there's a lot of good movies on this list. Let's see. I can only hear I'm driving. Yeah. So that's another good example. There you go. Like from Korea, so AQC says your videos helped a lot. Thank you. How do you effectively or strategically get the most out of each of your videos? Do you need to review the past videos every day or do I need to take notes? Uh, you mean like review my videos? So what, what I do like the, the tricky thing for language learning for most people is we, we are constantly looking for new information. So we always need something new. Hey, there's a new video about 10 phrases for whatever. So people are just like excited. They have to go watch that same content again uh, or some like new thing and they rarely review everything. That's why, again, like the movies I picked for this video are specifically to help people like overcome this kind of natural laziness about reviewing. So it takes effort to review, uh, but it's, it's like the easy, natural thing to, to want to look for new content. So if you're watching my videos or anything else, like what I do in Fluent for Life is have you review things in different ways each time. So it helps your mind stay focused on the information. So you might watch something and then you read it and then just listen to it uh, and then maybe try to write some of it down. So if you're just doing that with YouTube, you can do the same thing. Uh, but I would recommend in the, just like this with these videos where you're getting these different little bits of review each time you're going through these, uh, I would recommend you, you take some content and then find other content around that. All right, so if you're watching one of my videos, you can certainly watch the same thing again if you want to, but I would recommend you try to, you, you consume that content in a different way. So you would watch the video, then just listen to it. So then your, your mind is a little bit more focused. Maybe you can't see what I'm saying uh, or like you can't see what I'm writing on the board, but your mind is a little bit more excited and you're, you're paying attention. Maybe you take a few key phrases and write them down, but I would usually, like a lot of the things that I talk about on YouTube are principles about learning. I will teach some vocabulary as well. And especially if you're if you're looking at like the deeper lesson in all of my videos, it's, it's watching how I speak. So how can I continue speaking for two hours or whatever, all right? It's not because I'm like a genius. It's just like I, I know how, like I understand how the process of, of communication works. And so especially like what I talk about in Speak Like Me, which is also influent for life, you're taking uh, information and, and, and kind of weaving things together. Uh, and I, I don't want to like get too, <laughs> too deep into the weeds about this, but the basic idea is that you should be reviewing things in different ways. Uh, and especially if you're just watching my videos, watch them, then read them, then uh, like look at the transcript or just try to listen to them or write things down, but also look for different content about that. So if I'm talking about some of these movies after this video is finished, go watch another video talking about any of these movies. Watch the trailer of that first. So it's maybe two minutes of, of content about these things. Watch a trailer about The Truman Show. Watch a trailer about Groundhog Day. All right, so that's just the short movie clip that you might see on YouTube and all this stuff is available right here. That was a long answer, I apologize. <laughs> Uh, let's see. All right. Okay. Uh, so yes, edge of tomorrow. Yes, I made it. Well, uh, uh, oh, yes. So I finally joined fluent for life. Oh, fantastic. Congratulations. Welcome to the program. When did you join it? Like today or like a while ago? Welcome to the program. Uh, this is my favorite one. Uh, click is another good one to add a time loop category movies. Yeah, so there are more. I wanted to just give a few examples of each one of these movies. Let's see, ground mark my childhood. Hey, I'm late. What is the topic today? Check the title of the video. <laughs> For an action movie, there are a lot of good uh, English expressions, maybe. Yeah, and usually action movies are, are similar. Uh, like they don't have 
a lot of dialogue where the characters are talking to each other. You can um, uh, understand it quite well from the situation. But these, because like you're getting that same information again and again and again, these are really good examples of that. Julian says, The King's Speech is a good movie to practice English. Yep, so you can watch. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I've seen uh, The King's Speech as well. So they have like different ways of practicing uh, the guy learning how to give a speech. Drew, have you ever been to Brazil? No, I have not. I would like to go though. Big Short maybe in Netflix. Yes, you can probably find these on Netflix or just online, wherever. <clears throat> uh, Vincent says, how can I understand the native speaker when they use things like idioms, phrasal verbs, and some cultural expressions? Vincent from South Africa. So again, what we do, there are basically two ways to do this. One is where you're watching, let's say you're watching a movie. Uh, and this is if you're doing it by yourself. So just imagine you're trying to watch if you watch a movie, so this is you watching this movie, uh, and you're going to have, as you say, you got idioms and fast speech and uh, cultural expressions and other things like that. When you're watching this, either you have to do like one or two things. The first one is you have to stop and try to look up all of these different things and understand what they mean, all right? So it's like, okay, I heard this idiom, now I have to look that up or get a translation or something, and it really slows the movie down. So it's hard to understand. And often if you only understand, let's say, 50% of the movie, then you're, you're really missing a lot of the nuances or other jokes or things like that. You might understand some of it, but you're going to need to understand at least like 80 to 90% of the movie or whatever. It could be a TV show or an article you're reading for you to really enjoy that content. So this is if you're doing it by yourself. Now what we do in Fluent for Life is we actually do this, like we take all of these different things and we teach them to you in steps first. So it would be like, like you start here, we're gonna learn some idioms. And now we're gonna practice a little bit of maybe some grammar that appears in the movie. And now we're going to do a little bit like, uh, let's see, what is, I don't know, something else. Like we might learn some cultural references. And then when we finally watch the movie, Ah, now you understand 80 to 90% of it because we reviewed all the information before the movie. Okay, so this is what we do in Fluent for Life. So again, you, like if you're learning a language by yourself, you just have to go through the process of, of collecting all this information and teaching it to yourself, which is a real pain in, in butt. <laughs> Uh, or you can just have someone do it for you, so you just go through and like, oh, look at that. It's just nice and easy. We get to understand all the lessons. Everything is very smooth and natural and automatic, all right? So in Fluent for Life, rather than taking a movie, we just have a conversation between, you know, two people or three people. And so if you, if you, if you go to the conversation first, I often recommend this to new people in the program, if you watch the conversation first, you might understand a lot of it, but you probably wouldn't yet feel confident using a lot of that vocabulary in your own conversations. Uh, but if you go through the steps, Okay, we're gonna start here with some grammar, uh, but I'm also going to, I'm going to write some of that, I'm going to read it, I'm going to listen to that, I'm going to get lots of naturally varied review and practice, just this. And we're gonna focus on just one thing. So we don't want to teach every grammar point, we just want to focus on one thing. Another maybe issue that uh, a lot of learners have is that they're trying to learn, they wanna learn like a grammar point and then how to learn, I don't know, like 10 different grammar points at the same time, but they can't really use any of them fluently. Remember that people are, especially natives, as they're learning, and you, for your learning of your own native language, uh, you're getting things again and again naturally by understanding them from the situation. So if you go to a restaurant and you order some food, what are the kinds of vocabulary and grammar that people would use there? So could I have something? May I have something? I would like this. So it's not really thinking about grammar, it's more understanding the patterns in, uh, um, in speech, and that's how you learn these things. And so we do this, and so you just have to choose which one of these you're, you're going to learn, all right? So are you doing it by yourself, and you have to go through and stop stop the movie every time you, you don't know a word and you have to look it up, or you learn all, all these things beforehand and then you watch it and everything is much easier, okay? All right, and let's keep going here. For the people who are reading, let's see. Let's see, all right, so Leno says, uh, 
So ground all day, edge of tomorrow, the big short, usual suspects, home alone. Yeah, so the, if you want the list of these movies, just you'll find them in the description below these, uh, below this video as well. Uh, Andrian says, a Matrix is a good movie as well. 12 Angry Men, how tall are you? How tall am I? How tall do you think I am? That's an interesting question. How tall do you think I am? I'll let you guys debate that in the chat. Uh, Enrique says, hey, Dre, probably me and Drew, I love your methodology and I've watched some of them. I like 8 Mile. That's pretty different. Thanks a bunch. Yes, again, there are good movies. There are lots of movies you could watch. It's just some movies will be better at giving you naturally varied review, like within the movie itself. All right? So you could watch 8 Mile and uh, Coming to America and, uh, I don't know, some other movie, American Werewolf in London, just to name some random movies. You could watch all of those movies and you might even enjoy them and understand a lot of the vocabulary. But would you be able to use that vocabulary in your own conversations? That's the question, all right? So the point is not to learn a lot of vocabulary if you can't use that vocabulary. So it's much better to know a few words and then have, um, and then have like, like you, you feel very confident about using those because you understand them so well. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, I think we're going, we're going well over here. All right, can you give us uh, nowadays movies? Yeah, some of these are, are more recent. I don't, I don't know, like I haven't actually watched a lot of movies recently, but since I gave you the kinds of movies you should be looking for, you can, you can easily look these up. Go to Google and just say, give me recent movies about time loops. Uh, in Korea, the movie The Intern is said to be the best English learning movie. Oh, that's interesting. If it, I've never seen The Intern. Is that the one where they, uh, they go to Google and like get jobs at Google or something, I think? Uh, so yes, Victor, <laughs> TPS reports. So what does TPS report mean? It doesn't, like, it, native speakers don't know what that means either. And that's, that's kind of the point of the movie. So it's just some nonsense thing that they put in the movie it, because it's, it's to, it, the idea is it's any kind of report that you would have to do that it's just a waste of time or a stupid thing that you have to do in a company. All right, so asking am I in a hurry? No, I'm not, but I wanted to get through, I like to get through the content first and that way I can answer questions like this afterwards. All right, so this movie is incredible. Uh, no spoiler alerts. All right, let's see, I'd like vocabulary about work then watch a movie about work. <laughs> if it like sit for, for this for this specific movie, that's what we're talking about. Uh, Nils is back. Nils says, uh, can I ask what is an arc? So an arc like this shape right here. So if we have a circle like this is the arc of it. And so when we're talking about a character arc, usually a character starts in one point, like a movie like Star Wars, you have a guy, uh, Luke Skywalker, who is on a farm by himself. He's, he's, he's like a nobody, nothing special. And he says, well, I want to go be a, like a Jedi, like my father. And so he goes off on an adventure. And, and the point is, like, how does he change as a, as a character over time? So what we're looking for in a movie, so in a movie like Groundhog Day, uh, we have like the, the arc of the character of Bill Murray, so the main character. He's, he starts out the movie as like a kind of grouchy, uh, mean, a uh, really snarky kind of guy, uh, and people don't like him very much. <laughs> but by the end of the movie, like he learns to be nice. So that's that's his arc in the movie. But within that, you've got this time loop example where he's learning from his mistakes over and over and over again. All right, but that's why the movie is really useful for learning the English language because you're getting lots of examples of how. Uh, how the same vocabulary is used again and again, and even people talking in the same situation about slightly different things or, uh, or communicating in a different way. Uh, let's see. All right, Enrique says, oh, okay, I got that one already. All right, hello from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, says Peter Kevin Yang. I don't have any questions, I only want to listen. Yes, you would say, I don't have any questions, I only want to listen to your class. With Pulp Fiction's dialogues, you will be fluent. Yes, if you can understand those dialogues, then yes. <laughs> but then uh, understanding is different from being able to use it fluently. Often I will get people on my videos, they comment, how can an English learner 
understand this video if they can't speak? And the answer is because these are two different skills. You can have someone who's understanding a lot because they've heard a lot of English and they recognize it, but they don't have that ownership level of, uh, of vocabulary where they can really use it fluently. Uh, is it better to dissect a movie or watch it straight? Uh, I, would, I would go through it a few times if you're trying to watch something again and again. But don't, there, there's an expression in English to beat your head against a wall. So I'm just like, ah, like I don't get it. I'm trying to do it again and again. So it could be learning a grammar point or some vocabulary and you just don't get it. Try to move to a different example. Get a different kind of example of something. Like when I'm teaching my kids, uh, I told a story uh, recently to my subscribers where I was talking about my uh, older daughter, Aria, was asking me about how she looked when she was zero years old. Now, zero, zero years old is something, it's like a, an expression in Japanese, but she said it in English. And I said, oh, we don't say zero years old. And I just gave her some other ways she could say that. So you could say when you're a few months old or when you were just born or after you were born or shortly after you were born, or you can say at you know three months or four months or whatever, all right? So I'm trying to give her different examples, number one, so she will get used to hearing those, and number two, so she will feel confident that she can choose one of those in, an, in a conversation, and she would be fine to use any of those. So what you'll notice in a conversation is there, it's like you're, you're talking about something, Oh, why does this one not erase very well? That's not so nice. Let me use blue. So you might be talking about something, and then at this point right here, maybe you get stuck for a moment. And even a native speaker, this will happen to them as well, but the process is much, much faster. So at this point, the brain starts processing. Like, I want to say, I want to express this idea, but I could say that, or that, or that, or that, and then you will just pick one of those, and then you keep talking again until you get stuck again and you have to choose something else. So I call this moving like water, uh, where you get faster at doing this as you learn because really you're getting more examples of different things you could say for that situation. So if I'm saying like, oh, I'm feeling really tired right now. I'm stuck here, like I'm feeling really tired right now and I want to express like, I don't know what I want to do, all right? So there are a couple of different ways I could say that. like. Maybe I should sit down, or I really need a rest, or I should take a nap, or whatever. There are lots of different ways you could express this, but again, the point is that there is not just one way to do something, and native speakers get really good at expressing themselves fluently because they can have so many options to choose from. Typically, when a non-native learner is trying to learn the language, what happens with them is like, they will be thinking about something and like, okay, now I'm stuck because I want to express something, but I forgot the one phrase that I know to express that. All right, so when I teach people, I'm trying to get you to, to learn and naturally varied review is a great way to do this because we have a situation and lots of different ways you could actually express that. All right, even something as simple as not. So if you forget the word cold, you could just say not hot. <laughs> You know, it might not be perfect, but it will keep the conversation moving, all right? So you want to be flowing like water in that way. All right, let me see, go back to questions over here. All right. Uh, okay, so again, like, <clears throat> if you're going to, like, watch it straight or dissect the movie, you could do this. I mean, you could watch it, you could, you could dissect it if you want to, but the point is to get to the point where you understand it like a native. All right. So typically natives, if they understand the content, they're not going back and reviewing it. If you understand it, you move on to the next thing, or you can go deeper into that and learn more about that. Uh, let's see. Hi from China. Uh, Sanam says, hello, sir. Uh, I tell you a truth that you speak English and I can understand almost, but my English teacher speaks English. I can't understand the meaning, maybe 50%. <laughs> yes. So I am intentionally speaking clearly not having like a, a mumbly voice. I'm not speaking too fast, 
and I'm not using lots of idioms and slang and other things like that. So those are the kinds of things that I do in Fluent for Life. So I don't, in these videos, this is really about helping you understand and feel confident that you can understand what I'm saying and you're, and you're getting the message of the lesson. Uh, and obviously it could be some vocabulary or something as well that I'm teaching, uh, but I, I want to make sure it's very clear. But when you're in a real conversation, like I gave the example before of if you're, if you're trying to learn by yourself, you either have to go back by yourself and review these different things and just either learn a translation or something like that, or you need someone to help you learn it, all right? You have to pick one, but you really need to learn that information if you want to speak fluently. All right. <clears throat> uh, all right, I think I got that one, all right. Watching a live stream for the first time. Nice to see you there. Yeah, it's nice to see we got some more new faces over there. Richard, listening, improving, awesome, no translate in my mind, any word. Yes, that's great. Yeah, so again, there are different levels of, of the English, and the English I'm using is specifically for non-native learners. Drew Rules, glad to hear it. Why do Koreans say the movie, The Intern, is good for learning English? I didn't find it very helpful. <laughs> Well, you could, I don't know, that you could have an interesting conversation with other Koreans about that movie. I'm sure, you know, that might be, uh, I don't know, who knows why that is. Kevin says, an interesting thing is I just took a real English class in school. Your class is even better than real class. <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, it would be interesting. Typically, English classes that you go to are, are not going to prepare you for, for like, for real life. Um, so anybody who's in classes, I, I often hear that a lot, like people who, who join classes or, or have to go to their class in college or for work or whatever. Uh, and typically what you will get, it's like it's a lot of English classes of a teacher uh, giving you like in a slow, clear, easy voice. You got nice, simple vocabulary uh, and then you don't have uh, like a lot of fast speech. <clears throat> Um, and so when you, the, the problem with this is that like it's, it's completely different from the real world. <laughs> and so in the real world, people speak quickly. They're using lots of idioms and slang and, uh, you know, other things like that. Uh, and often they are not being very clear. Okay. So if you learn only this and then you try to go into the real world, it's like hitting a wall. Like, oh my goodness, this English in the classroom is way different then the classroom, like, or like, the, you know, you could call it the classroom of real life. <laughs> so the real world, uh, we call this the school of hard knocks. School of hard knocks. Or just like the school of life or whatever. All right, so the classroom is very different from the real world, all right? So what we do in Fluent for Life and what, you rec what I recommend you should do uh, is you're, you're having to do this in simple steps. So if we take the fast speech and I give you like an example, here's me speaking something a little bit more slowly, but then you hear somebody else say it faster. And then here's a different person with a different accent. We're training you over time to understand native speakers automatically, all right? Same thing with the vocabulary. I could give you a regular everyday word like, uh, I'm hungry. So you probably know that word already, but then I want to teach you something a bit more advanced. It's like, oh, I'm famished. I'm famished. Or I'm starving. Starving. I'm starving. So these are the kinds of expressions natives will use. They're not really famished. They're not really starving, but it's just expressions that people use. So if you look at like, I remember I felt kind of bad about this, but I was at a, uh, I was in a, I was in a, in a school actually. I was teaching, and this uh, this this woman came in for uh, like for lunch, and so she was hungry for lunch. And a couple of us were just sitting at this table and she came in and she's like, you know, she's a little bit, I don't want to say fat, but she, I mean, she was a little bit bigger, you know, she looked, she looked pretty healthy, <laughs> I'll say. Uh, but, but she came into the room and she said, I'm starving. <laughs> I'm starving. And like, and I looked at her, I said, are you really starving? <laughs> I was just making a joke, you know, being a little bit stupid. But again, like, like when we think of actually starving, it's like a pretty thin, you know, like, like you're about to die, kind of starving or whatever. But we use these expressions. But the point is, like, if you learn these things, 
uh, from a teacher that can explain them to you and prepare you for those in the real world, that's how you get fluent. But if you only have just a regular class, like a lot of the stuff on YouTube is the same way. Like it's teaching you the, the basic things that you might hear, but it's not really preparing you for, for real life because you're not getting actual native examples of those things. All right. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so hi, dear teacher. I'm watching from Iran. Oh, I recently joined on 24th of May. It says sleep. Oh, okay. Well, welcome to the program. Hopefully you are enjoying it so far. You probably have not seen very much of it, maybe like a few videos or whatever. Uh, remember to take your time with the program. The goal is not to rush through it, uh, but hopefully you are enjoying the program. All right. Uh, then it says, Konnichiwa, Drew. I'm so happy when watching movies, I'm able to understand the phrasal verbs now. Thanks for your lessons. Yeah. Yeah, so phrasal verbs are another thing uh, that you will hear like in movies a lot. And so if you're prepared for them and you understand them like a native, then you get into the conversation. It's like, oh, look at that. I understand all the phrasal verbs. It makes a lot of sense. So Fluent for Life really breaks down everything so well. I genuinely enjoy using the transcript while watching the video. Yep, glad to hear it. So we have a, an interactive uh, video app. So it lets you click on the transcript. So right now, if you're watching this, uh, the transcript is created after the video is finished. So usually within a day, we have the transcript available. Um, but we will have, uh, you, you can just like watch it on a YouTube video. But what we created was an actual transcript that you can click on and jump to different sections of the video within that. So we have that for members as well. Uh, Oliveira says, I like to watch reality shows about life in Alaska. I understand very well, but when the people use the abuse of phrasal verbs is difficult. Yeah. So again, what you, what you expect, what you are prepared for, that you will find uh, much more easy or that, that you will find easier in conversations. Okay. So if you are not prepared, then of course you will feel overwhelmed when you get in conversations. AQC says, when you were learning Japanese, how you also watch a lot of different movies with lots of dialogues or listen and watch them over and over again. So for me, I actually did not watch, and I even today don't really watch a lot of Japanese movies. I don't watch a lot of Japanese TV either. Um, but I just like focus on getting naturally varied review. I'm making this video because I know a lot of people do enjoy watching movies. And so this is like a... Like, I, I don't, I mean, I, I would do the same thing in Japanese, I suppose, if I, if I cared about watching Japanese movies, but I, I really don't. But you don't need to watch movies in order to get this. I just know a lot of people enjoy watching movies, and so I would recommend these movies that you can watch to enjoy learning more. <laughs> So it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty simple thing, but me personally, when I'm learning, I'm looking for naturally varied review about situations. And so this is the same thing that we do in Fluent for Life. And so when I'm, I'm learning, like, what do I say when I go order some food? Or what do I do, uh, I don't know, when I'm, you know, whatever. Like, what do I say when I get hurt? Or what do parents say when they, they're yelling at their kids or something? So these are all examples of things you can do uh, learning just from that situation. Now, as I, as I said at the beginning of this video, I'm talking about like movies and especially reading a novel that could take you a week or more. You know, maybe you, you take more time or less time. Some people have a lot of time to read. Typically, it takes a long time to go through the content. A movie is obviously faster than reading a novel, um, but most people don't review the content. So what I do is I'm looking for like very specific chunks of, of content that are like, like a minute long or even shorter than that. So I could be reading a comic uh, and I'm looking at like what is, what is this situation like when someone is surprised, what do they say? And then I get a bunch of different examples of that. <clears throat> And it's, it's true that like, because I don't have anyone to teach me, it takes more time. So I have to find this stuff by myself. And usually it's like, it's not organized. It's just like, okay, I happen to, um, like I don't spend a lot of time, I don't know, like learning Japanese. I, spend, I, I try to take maybe like half an hour or an hour if I can actually every day to get some kind of understandable messages, whatever that is. But it's usually reviewing around a particular thing until I understand it. And when I get that aha moment of like, ah, okay, now I understand what they're saying, then like, 
you know. So like a, like a good example is like Koso. Uh, so this is like often in, in Japanese conversations, like there's a, there's a situation where like one person will do something and the other person says like, oh, like it, it's actually me who should, who should be doing that. So like if, if someone says like, thank you for doing something, I say, no, 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 like thank you for doing that, all right? So the same thing is that that same situation is in Japanese as well. And so the, like the vocabulary for that, like like a person says like, thank you. And I say like, ah, like kochira koso. Like it's like, I'm, I'm the one, you know, responsible or like I should do that. But you also hear this word used in other situations. And so I heard it again or I read it again like a couple of times, this was uh, like a comic that I'm reading. So I still go through episodes or, or like the, the series of uh, Doraemon novels, or uh, not novels, but like comic books. And so in that one, like there's, a, there's a, like one story where the character has a special telescope that lets him see things far away and reach out and grab them if he wants to. And so he's looking through it and, and like the main character, he's, he's like trying to learn how to do it. He wants to reach out and grab a cat that's far away, but he actually like grabs the tree branch that he's sitting on and he pulls himself to the tree. And so and now he says like, okay, this time I'm gonna do it. This time I'm gonna do it. And he says, it's like, you know, kondo koso, like this time, all right? So it's the same idea, but it's in like a, in a different context, all right? <clears throat> And so if I had someone to supply me with that information, that would be awesome. <laughs> because I could just say like, okay, like today we're going to learn this, all right? I'm gonna teach you like how to like fluently use this one particular thing. I'm going to give you a bunch of examples in different contexts and then you're going to be able to use it fluently even if like I don't speak. So I don't have to sit there and like, and, and practice saying the word. I don't get fluent by repeating that word again and again. I get fluent by understanding that word really well. And I understand it by getting lots of examples, all right? So this is why like when I talk about like these movies get you fluent, it's like the movie is getting you fluent. You're not sitting there speaking to the screen, it's getting you fluent. It's giving you review and helping you understand that vocabulary really well, all right? So what I'm doing in Japanese, uh, I would love to have, like, uh, nobody knows how to teach like this. And so I don't, and even my own wife. <laughs> I will ask my wife, uh, hey, like, how do you do this? And she's like, I got no time for that. You know, I got, you know, taking care of two kids or whatever. I don't, I don't have time to answer your, your language questions. <laughs> and, and so I have to, like, you know, uh, pay attention and look at situations and try to seek those things out by myself. All right, uh, let's see, Denise says, hi, Drum. Denise from Brazil, too. It seems that Brazil is one that loves you the most. Yes, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of fans, a lot of students in Brazil. It's funny, like, I'm not, I have one of the, like, most popular YouTube channels in Japan, but most Japanese people do not know who I am. All right, uh, let's see. I think you were tall, 6'185". Wow, correct. I'm actually, why? Well, I mean, I'm like 6'6", six, six, depending on the day. <laughs> So I am, uh, yes, yeah, so I would be 130, 183.5 centimeters or something like that. So if you can imagine that, 6'1". I love Friends. I love Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, it's a good movie. A few words plus deeper understanding and limited, limitless usage. Yes. So Slee, you got it exactly. All right. I like watching Peppa Pig. It's understandable English. Yeah. <laughs> And so that, that's another thing. I might make another one of these about specific TV shows uh, that I recommend people watch. But like the, just like a quick spoiler about that video, it would probably about be, be about like serials where like a, like a crime TV show is a good example because you have a particular format where you know something is going to happen again and again. If you just have like random episodes about different things, it's harder to get review. You will get used to the characters, but uh, again, like you want, you want to just understand all of these situations. I want to be very clear about something I know I repeat this again and again. You notice I repeat a lot. So hopefully this video demonstrates that fluency comes as you understand words better, all right? So it, it's not like you start at zero and then you get to like 3,000 and yay, now you are fluent. It, fluency doesn't work like that, all right? So th this is why you can, you can have people who know a lot of words but still can't speak. All right. So they know a lot, but they don't know that they don't know that vocabulary like really well. They don't have a deep understanding of that vocabulary.
But notice also that some things, like you might know this word really well, but this word, not so much, all right? So what happens is you get fluent in this word or this phrase or whatever because you understand it very well. It's like being fluent in the word hello. So I understand it when I hear it. I know when to use it. I feel confident about using it. I'm fluent in the word. I have like a very deep understanding about when to say hello, okay? But maybe some other word I do not, all right? So you don't get fluent as you learn more words. You get fluent in each thing individually. And if you understand a lot of these things well, that is your overall fluency. Okay, so to measure your overall fluency is really how many words do you know fluently, like by, by those individual words. So when you are learning new things like this, like you will learn something, you hear it first in the movie, then you hear it again, you hear it again, you hear it again, 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 again. And all of these are different things, different situations that help you understand that vocabulary better. This is why I repeat myself, but I try to explain things or tell different stories to try to highlight things in a different way. So I want to give you naturally varied review. If I just said the same thing over and over and over, it would get boring very quickly, all right? But you'll notice a lot of my videos, it's, just, it's, it's talking about the same basic idea. You want to review things in different ways to get fluent automatically, all right? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Julian, I know Julian really likes Peppa Pig. <laughs> so I like Peppa Pig as well. That's another good, another good show to watch. But if you can find things that have like a kind of format, like a crime, a crime show, especially older ones like Columbo, that was a good one. You know, it's like same kind of thing. All right. Uh, Sayuri. Oh, hello. Hello from Japan. Maybe you've already talked about this, but often have trouble hearing sentences when it's spoken in movies or shows i'm okay with daily conversation is this a listening problem uh, it depends uh, it could be if like you might be used to some people like in a conversation typically uh, i call this code switching So code, sw code switching is when like I'm speaking one way with my friends and then I, I find like a non-native speaker and I start changing the way I speak just naturally to make sure I'm more easily understood. So if you are talking with natives and it's easier to understand them, it's probably because they're trying to be more easily understood, just like I'm making these videos easy to understand. All right, so I'm speaking differently in a conversation than I would, you know, like teaching a lesson like this. So again, this is what we do in Fluent for Life is we want to take you from understanding what people might do in a conversation where it's a little bit easier to understanding what people are talking about in movies and TV shows, all right? So you have to, you have to really pay attention to what native speakers are doing and get used to that over time. So you have to learn the vocabulary, get used to the speed, and really train your ears to hear blended speech. Because right now you notice I'm, I'm speaking like it's, it's, it still sounds like native English, but I'm speaking clearly and I'm not using any like slang or idioms or anything like that. All right. It's really, really simple speech for people to understand. Uh, let's see. Our next, uh, Rodrigo says, hey, heck yeah, Julian, uh, kids shows usually have loads of repetition, which is really helpful. Yes. So again, like I, I encourage my own kids to watch Peppa Pig or, you know, whatever, Paw Patrol or other things like that. And kids, it's interesting, they can even watch the same episode again and again. And typically they're, they're getting lots of um, like additional review or they're learning new things that they didn't notice each time they watch it. It's kind of like when you watch a movie when you're five years old and then you watch that same movie again 20 years later and you're like, wow, look at that actor. Like you notice things or you notice vocabulary that you didn't notice at first. So the more you can review things, like even something, if you were learning English, you've been learning English for a long time, you might go back and watch a movie or something that you, you tried watching before, go back and watch it again. And that's also, as I mentioned earlier in this video, for people in Fluent for Life, if you start a lesson set and you go to the conversation first, you will probably find it more difficult. But then as you go through the lesson set and then you go back to the conversation, it's a lot easier to understand. Uh, let's see. Elena says, how is possible that you are able to speak Japanese but you quit 
your quit on your Spanish lessons. Japanese seems more difficult to learn to me. Yes, I, I don't, I, I often hear people or see people on YouTube or whatever talking about one language is more difficult for a people than another. I think that that might come from if you're trying to learn one language, like starting from one language and then trying to learn a new language, especially if it's different. So in English, like the, the, the sentence structure is, is a little bit different from Japanese. So some of it is similar, some of it is not. So the adjective comes before the noun in English and in Japanese. So I would say red car in English and red car also in Japanese. Uh, but in like, but the verb is, in, is, in, is at the end of the sentence in Japanese and it's in the middle. Or you know, if we're gonna take a simple sentence like I eat pizza in English, it would be like I pizza eat in Japanese. So there are certain things like that um, that can be a little bit tricky because you're used to used to things like, oh, okay, I understand it, you know, one way in my native language and now I'm trying to learn it in a different one. So you're trying to retrain your brain. But the interesting thing about the language by itself is it is it basically kids all over the world learn to speak their native language at the same rate. Like, I don't think Chinese kids learn Chinese like when they're 10 years old or something. Like, they start, they all learn it at the same time. So I can go, I can go to a park like in, in the United States and see different, different people from different countries. And like, it's little Chinese kids or little like Arabic speaking, you know, whatever the language is. Uh, and it doesn't matter what the language is. Like, the kids are all learning them at the same rate. Um, so like the interesting thing is that if you learn it as a native speaker, which is what I teach, and so that's learning English as a first language rather than learning it as a second language, so you don't learn English through something else. So for Japanese, like when I took Spanish lessons in school, in college, I was learning Spanish through English, and then I was also getting lots of the typical like language study, grammar rules, and other things like that, that like I just couldn't understand them. And that's why I don't do a lot of like talking about grammar rules, like the, the names of grammar points and things like that. I don't find it helpful. I don't do that for teaching my own children. Uh, and most people don't find that helpful for being able to speak. But once I started learning Japanese like a Japanese kid, and now like a Japanese adult or whatever, it, it's the same thing. Like it's not more difficult. It's just like I understand it. All right. The only tricky thing is I have to do it myself because I don't have anyone to really teach me. Uh, it's, you know, it's ba basically the, the world is my teacher, but I have to organize all the information and, and, and be very proactive about that. Uh, let's see. I can't even speak my native language. <laughs> oh, no, that's trouble. Uh, let's see, Vladimir, what TV show do you recommend to watch? Uh, maybe I'll make a, a video series about that. But I, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, I would find something that has like a, a serial format, like a crime solving thing. Uh, and some older TV shows are, are probably a little bit easier than that. I recommended Columbo before. Uh, so that's a, like a guy uh, who, he, there's like a similar, a similar format for each of the each of the stories and so you'll hear repeated vocabulary and you will you will recognize like oh this is where he's going to do this and i when you're prepared for it it's the preparation that makes you feel confident uh let's see arturo says hi mister hi teacher can i acquire the american accent from morocco yeah why not you, you don't you don't need to be you need to be like a, experiencing the uh, the vocabulary, the speakers, but you don't need to be physically around those people. It's like right now, you're learning, you're learning with me even though you're not in Japan. And I'm not even in the United States and I can still teach people. Don't Moroccans speak English fluently? Yeah, I think a lot of them do, many of them do. <clears throat> Only need an American accent. Uh, again, also if you'd like to sound more like me and you want to do that uh, step by step, get Frederick. So that's the app I created to, to help people do that, learn the same way natives learn pronunciation. Watching from Yemen, nice to see you there. From India, I watch Friends in English. Yep, I know people enjoy that show. Uh, thanks a lot, man. You helped me since I followed your accounts and I feel day to day my talents upgrade. Glad to hear. Greetings from Brazil. Have you mentioned some movies? If you did, can you mention it again? Just look down in the, in the description below this video and you will see the list of movies I talked about. But the basic idea uh, is this, where we, instead of watching a, a movie where you just have a story, 
and it's a bunch of events that happen and it's like one event and then the next event and then the next event so that's a typical movie i would recommend you do something where you have the same content reviewed again and again in different ways so one of those is a time loop style movie like groundhog day uh, one of my favorite movies actually uh, and so that's where you have the same situation again and again i think there's another one it's like happy death day instead of happy birthday it's happy death day uh, but this is a girl like a college student who gets killed i think and so she relives the same day again and again until she figures out who the killer is so a similar idea but this is where you're seeing something and you and you you know something is going to happen when you pre when you are prepared for something that's how you start feeling uh very confident about that <clears throat> uh yeah so just check check in the description below this video for the for the list but you will find others as well uh, also i will make this video available so you can watch it again is watching japanese movie which dubbing to english help fluent english too uh, yeah, I suppose it would, yeah. I mean, if you're, the, the point is, do you understand the movie or not? You know, I mean, like, the, if the English is correct, then you would be learning it in English. You wouldn't be learning Japanese. But, yeah, you can, you can certainly watch, like, if you mean, like, an anime or, like, a movie with Japanese people in it, but it's dubbed in English, sure, you could learn from that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so th those are the, the movies up there. Thank you for posting those. Hello from Pakistan. Uh, greetings from Taiwan. Nice to see you, Lily. After a long time, I catch up to you live. Love from India. Hello. Good morning from India. How to learn English in its context. This is what I just talked about. Hey, Drew, how's it going, bud? It's going well. From Pakistan. Sayuri again. Thank you. That might be the reason because the person I talk to daily as a native English speaker has been living here in Japan for 10 plus years. They may be naturally doing code switching. Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would guess that they are. You can test this by, by like finding them, like if you invite, maybe invite them out to, you know, go somewhere and bring another native speaker and then have them speak to that native speaker. <laughs> and you will see, wow, it's like, a, you know, a, probably a different, uh, like a difficult uh, or different thing, different thing. Uh, Jesus says, or Jesus says, I understand a lot of the information in documentaries, and I think I already have enough vocabulary. But when I watch a movie, I feel frustrated most of all uh, when people start laughing, and I don't. Yes, so this is a very common problem to not understand the joke, and this was a big thing for me when I came to Japan because I like to make people laugh and, and feel good, and I like to. I don't want to be the person who's not getting the joke. <laughs> And so when I, was, when I was talking with people, it would be a conversation of maybe foreigners and Japanese people at a party or something, and they're laughing, and I have to kind of pretend to laugh, but I don't understand <laughs> what's happening. Uh, and so as I, as I get better, like now I can make jokes in Japanese and make people laugh, but like at that time, I could not. And a lot of that, again, I had to teach myself how to learn the language like a native, but it certainly is possible to do. Now, I make this obviously very easy and uh, fluent for life because all the information is already like collected and organized for you. Just, you just have to go through it. Um, but you can certainly do that by yourself if you want to. Uh, Bruno says, I'm following your tip about learning from situations like the espresso video. I got video how to make an omelet. Ha ha ha. <laughs> learning some good vocab and mastering the art of omelet. Yes. So again, you can, I would take something simple like that. Like people think they, they'd laugh at that. They think that's funny or like a waste of time. But if, if you learn how to make an omelet and you hear 10 different people, you watch 10 different videos about people making an omelet, it's like, you would get very good at doing that. But the important thing, the interesting thing, is that you can then take that vocabulary and apply it elsewhere. So if I'm talking about making an omelet or making espresso or whatever, even if it's a simple thing, there are probably some idioms or expressions that they use and you understand what those are. It's like, like I don't know, like I, I, don't, I don't have time to spend making omelets or something like that. So you learn an expression, maybe a few people use that, and it's like, yeah, I don't have time to do whatever. And so you learn that construction, I don't have time to do something. So you could say I'm busy or I, I don't have time for whatever uh, or like, but you can, you, you, you take that thing that you understand, it's like a little piece of the language, 
a language pattern, and then you can apply that to other situations. So I don't have time to work. I don't have to time. I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to do this or whatever. All right. So you're learning those individual things, and that's why, like the content I recommend. I know people want to watch movies, and so you can do that. But it's the thing I'm doing is looking for really small pieces of the language, and so I can understand those very well. And then I understand. Oh, in this situation, people say this. Uh, let's see. Do you have specific time to uh, ah, for lives, or does it depend? Yes, I mean it's usually around this time. I've been lately doing videos on Monday and Thursday around this time, uh, but because I enjoy my freedom, I hate making a schedule <laughs> for that. But it's around there, and like I probably should try at a different time. I know some people like you guys, like especially the people who watch regularly, uh, they're all learning at the same time or they, they're, they're, you know, they can come at the same time, but a lot of other people are maybe asleep right now. But I do make all these videos available uh, and you don't have to watch them live to benefit from that. Uh, let's see, do you recommend watch shows with or without subtitles? Yes, yeah, I think if you can understand the content without subtitles, that's fine. If you need the subtitles, that's, that's fine too. It's not like one is worse or, or whatever. I mean, I'll still use, I enjoy even for watching Japanese kids shows, I will have subtitles on just to test myself. So I might watch something and then I could play it back and then put the subtitles on and see if I understood what they were saying. So you can play with that. This is the same thing I recommend people do in Frederick. So if you have the app, you can uh, like scroll, you know, close your eyes, scroll through some of the letters and listen to the sound. And you know, you could try to say like, oh, this is whatever, like what letters you could try to spell the word or something and open your eyes and then check to see if your answers are correct. But as you spend more time doing that, you will get good and uh, you won't need the subtitles anymore. So Louis says, uh, Forrest Gump, Shawshank Redemption, Godfather. Yeah, so you got a, a bunch of good uh, movies over there. <clears throat> yeah, so like, I don't know if ChatGPT gave you any other, um, like, like maybe ChatGPT Chat explained why it recommends those movies, because uh, that's like a bunch of, you know, Lot, I mean, those are a lot of good movies. <laughs> but I mean, th like the things that I recommended in this video specifically are like, I want to have you get fluent. I want the video to get you fluent. I want the video to help you really give you lots of review without you needing to do anything else. Uh, Duran says, I hope you do video talking about situation in a clinic or hospital. Yeah, this is the, the kind of thing we have in Fluent for Life. So we, are, we already have those videos already. <clears throat> So in English movies, uh, people laugh and I don't understand why they are laughing and I start laughing too because I don't understand. <laughs> yes, that's a, it's a common thing we do. So does reading help improve English? Uh, let's see, as speaking. Yes, so you should be reading, writing, speaking, listening. I mean, speaking is, interestingly, speaking is like the least valuable one. I mean, it's it certainly, you can, you can do that um, if you want to, but if you don't understand the information first, it's wasting your time. So you don't, you don't learn, you don't become a better speaker by speaking more. You become a better speaker by understanding the, the vocabulary better. And when you understand it like, ah, now I got it, then you feel very confident about using it fluently. Mr. Exon says, I can understand what you speak, but when I watch in movies, it's totally different. I can only understand 50%. Yes. So again, this is the, the problem we've already covered a couple times in this video. Uh, and I've also talked about it in many other videos, but the basic idea is that it's a different kind of English. The English I'm giving you in this video is different from the real world English. So some of the vocabulary will be the same, obviously, but people will be speaking differently. Maybe they're not speaking as clearly or they're using uh, like difficult accents or the vocabulary also could be different. And so what we do in Fluent for Life is we're taking you from understanding this kind of teacher English, the nice, easy to understand stuff, to work, working you up to understanding things as a, as a native would understand them. All right. All right. Let's see here. Hi. Martha says, good morning from Namibia. My mom was just in Namibia like two weeks ago. <clears throat> I think she was down there for a tour on the skeleton coast. Uh, I understand some vocabulary words in English, and I'm having a fear of speaking in front of many people, and I want to... Uh, you to help me to improve my English. Yeah, so you're, unless you, if you, uh, if you also uh, have fear of speaking in front of other people in your native language, 
then that's just that's like maybe a stage fright thing that doesn't have much to do with like language ability. But if you don't mind speaking in front of other people, but you do mind or you do worry about speaking in front of others in English, then that just means you don't know the vocabulary well enough. You don't feel confident enough because you're worried about mistakes or using the wrong word or like mispronouncing something or whatever, that kind of thing. And so if you get better at understanding the language, you feel very confident about it. So this is what we do, like you have to do this in steps. Uh, it's really difficult to just try to jump directly into native English because there's, there's so much to learn, it's overwhelming. But if you do it in steps, it's nice and easy. All right. <clears throat> Uh, Chris Yoga says, please make some videos about common idioms and those that are used very much in conversations. Yes, yeah, so you will find there, there's lots of that content on YouTube already. Um, and also we have some new guides on our, we just released a guide to idioms actually. If you go to EnglishAnyone.com, go to the free lessons, you can find that link in the menu uh, and then you can check those out. All right. Uh, Wally is a very good option to start. Yeah, so kids' movies as well, those are they're going to be a little bit easier and often have some slower, slower English. But interestingly, kids' movies will also have some jokes and other things for adults in them. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking my comment. Yes, yeah, my pleasure. Drian says, can I get fluent as early as two weeks? You can get fluent in, I mean, in an hour or a minute. You know, it depends, but it's in that particular vocabulary. I want to be very clear, I will repeat myself again, you get fluent in individual words and phrases, all right? Either you understand the vocabulary or you do not. And so typically what happens is you will like, you will hear something again and again and again and again until you understand it, until it clicks in your mind like, ah, now I understand what this means. And you could do that very quickly. So often when I'm teaching people, I try to make things very clear. Like if I have, I'm trying to teach you a phrasal verb, I could like tell you what it is in your native language and then try to explain it, or I could just show you what it is. So this is a marker and I take off the cap. So take off the cap. I could say remove the cap, but I just say take off, all right? And so after you learn that, it's like, huh, take off the cap. And so I also can guess, like maybe I take off my shirt or take off my pants or take off my glasses or take off my wig or whatever, all right? Take off my shirt. And so when you're learning things like that, once you understand them like a native, then it clicks in your mind and you notice you become fluent very, very fast, all right? But you get fluent word by word or phrase by phrase or grammar point by grammar point. So if I drop something on my head and I learn, ouch, and I see some other people do the same thing, then I will naturally think, okay, when you get hurt, you say, ouch, in English. When you get hurt in Japanese, you say, ita, or whatever, you know. They have different expressions, just like we have different expressions in English. And so when, when I tell people, like, you can become a fluent speaker, like with Fluent for Life, in 30 days or less, what I'm really saying is that like you will focus on a lesson set and become fluent in that vocabulary in 30 days or less, and then you can use that vocabulary to talk about whatever you like, all right? And then you just repeat this process as you go through the other lesson sets. But if, you, if you're not learning, if you keep learning new vocabulary, but you don't really understand it, you're just wasting your time. So you will continue to learn more and more and more, like going from zero words to 3,000 words, but you still can't speak. So the problem is not the vocabulary. It's not how many words you know, it's how well you know the vocabulary, all right? And again, this is why it doesn't, like speaking, if I, if I learn a word, like I gave the example of like koso in English, uh, in Japanese earlier in this video, uh, if I just repeat that word again and again, or if I'm teaching you a new word in English and I just say, okay, repeat after me, uh, trounce, trounce trounce, trounce, trounce. And I just, I, I keep saying a word over and over again. And I could say the word a hundred times. And if you don't understand what I mean, then what are we doing? We're just wasting our time. You might maybe recall the word if someone else heard it, like, oh, like trounce. Okay, I heard that word. Or like, yeah, maybe I've heard, heard that somewhere. You recognize the word, but you can't use it fluently. You don't really know what it means. You don't know when to use it. You don't feel confident about it. So you don't use the word. Okay, so when you're learning vocabulary, you get fluent in each individual thing, all right? 
And so right there, like, so what is tramps? See, even, even some people would not be able to hear that word clearly. All right, so even right now, like to me, it's like trounce, trounce, trounce. So I'm saying something, but because you aren't prepared for the word, if you just hear something like that, you're like, what did he say? Did he say tramps? And this is why in Frederick we have you compare all these different sounds because it's the comparison that lets you understand these sounds like a native. All right, so I said trounce. Trounce, trounce. Now I used this word because this is a more difficult word that a lot of people would not know, and it just means to beat someone really badly. Like you like trounce them in a in a sporting event or a fight where you had like 200 to one. You know, we we really trounced them. We trounced them. All right. But the point is, like, if I repeat that word again and again and again, it's not going to help you become a fluent speaker. Even if you repeat that word again and again, it's not going to help you become a fluent speaker, all right? We could spend a whole day. I could just repeat the word again and again. You could repeat that. You could speak for two hours just repeating that word. Would that make you fluent in that word? You've been speaking. Doesn't speaking get you fluent? That's what everybody says. Speaking does not get you fluent. What gets you fluent is the understanding of the word. And you can understand something very quickly. It's like, man, I'm like really like punching somebody like, wow, I really trounced that guy. And then maybe you hear another uh, example where like one team beats another team really badly. Like, wow, they trounced that team. And slowly, it's like, ah, you know, if I could give you like three or four different examples related to that, you would become fluent in the word trounce in five minutes or less. And then you would be like, oh, wow, well, like, I got it. I discovered the meaning of the word from the different related examples. And that's how you get fluent. And then you can start using the word fluently whenever. And so you notice other things like, wow, like that, like that politician really beat this other pol politician by a lot. So this guy got way more votes than this other guy. He really trounced that guy. Okay. <laughs> So remember, the goal is not to learn a lot of vocabulary. It's nice if you have a lot of vocabulary, but it's only nice if you can use it fluently. All right, a big vocabulary is great. It will help you understand things, but typically people don't, don't feel confident. And as, as many people have said in this video and in lots of my videos, I understand what you say, Drew, but I have trouble understanding what natives are saying. It's a different kind of English. And the only way to prepare for that is either by yourself, where you're trying to study a lot, gets a lot, getting lots of different examples, or you just have someone like me give you all that and just help you, help you guide, guide you through it. All right, Julian says, uh, will I be able to speak English more fluently if I loosen my inhibitions uh, with a few glasses of liquor? It's my theory. Yes, you know, I actually noticed that in Japan. So Japanese people are, are notorious for knowing English but not speaking. <laughs> because they're, they're very worried about making mistakes. But as soon as you get them even like one glass of you know, wine or beer or whatever, and they're like, hey, like, and they're still not speaking correctly, but, you know, <laughs> but they don't feel inhibited by that, all right? But remember, you get fluent word by word as you learn. And so if you, I mean, anybody, does anybody disagree with anything I'm saying so far? <laughs> anybody disagree? I would love to hear that, all right? Remember, you get fluent word by word. So if you get fluent in a whole bunch of individual words, you'll speak fluently. Like you will be able to use those words and have fluent conversations. Does that make sense? So this is all I did to get fluent in Japanese. And this is the same thing I teach, like all the videos I make, I don't know, 600 some videos. It's basically talking about this one idea. Understand like a native and you will speak like one. All right. See what time it is. All right, I think it's time to shut this down, but it has been a pleasure. Look at that. So the, the content, we got that done in 22 minutes or something like that. <coughs> and now we're at, uh, <laughs> and now we're at about an hour and a half. All right, uh, the info you give works. All right, glad to hear it. Yes, so remember, you can test these ideas for yourself. You can test these ideas for yourself. So if you think about it, okay, I'm, I'm still learning more and more words, but I'm not speaking fluently. What's the problem? The problem is I don't know the information well enough. 
I don't really feel confident about it. I'm like, is the pronunciation of this word like this or like that? Or do you use it in this way or that way? Or is this idiom like this thing or that thing? If you have any doubts about the word, it means you don't understand it perfectly. And when you understand it perfectly, you use it fluently. That's really the goal. We want to get to, to really solid, perfect level understanding. Okay? You don't even have to be perfect, but just feel, when, when you feel something like, ah, I got it, I understand what that means now. Like when I was reading that, it was like, oh, look, look at that, like I understand what that means, I got it. So now I understand, like, it, it's, it's like a completely different feeling in a conversation when you really understand what the other person is saying. It's like if you, if you listen to somebody talking to you in a different language that you don't understand at all, it's just like, blah, 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 I don't understand what they're saying. But when you really understand, it's like, ah, like, now you're speaking my language, okay? Now you understand what the other person is saying. All right, Gertrude says, thank you, uh, thanks so much, thanks so moo, maybe thanks so much, yes. <laughs> All right, Victor says, any advice when struggling on simple things uh, like when I should use this or that? Yeah, so this is, again, it's the, it's the review that gets you fluent in these particular things. So whatever it is, that is the answer to every question. All right, that's why what I do is so easy. It's just like naturally varied review. So if you want to know if you should be saying this thing or that thing, then you need naturally varied review about that topic. So people influent for life, they can go to those specific grammar points about like this or that, or these or those, or whatever the, the particular construction might be, or the vocabulary, or the topic, or different speakers. So if I want to listen to different British English speakers and hear native like American English speakers and British English speakers talking about the same thing, then you can get that in the program too. All right, but that's how you get fluent. You need to do this, like whether you do it with me or not, this is how you get fluent, all right? So it's not just like learning more things and repeating them by yourself. It's really getting lots of examples because even if you understand something, you still need to be prepared for all of the other speakers you will meet in conversations. And even if like, even if you're not talking with people directly, you will still hear movies and things like that. So you need to have uh, examples of that. So I watch movies in British English or even like watching Japanese people talking like there are different ways of speaking Japanese. There are different areas of Japan with, with their own dialect. All right. Elsa says, I agree. We should read a lot and listen before speaking. Yeah. The, the goal is understand it well. If you understand it well, then you can use it. That's how you get fluently. All right. How can I speak with you, sir? Yeah, so we don't, uh, like, I don't do, like, personal lessons or anything like that because you, you, you don't get fluent with me by, by taking personal lessons. You need to get lots of review with different people. So it, it can't be only just me. That's why I don't offer that. All right? So, but it's all in Fluent for Life. Everything is, like, already nicely organized. It's all ready for people. Victor says, I think I am getting fluency. However, I still have issues understanding phone conversations. Any advice? Yes, I would listen to more content. Like you can find um, like even videos on YouTube, but just don't watch them. So listen, listen to it first. So just to train your ears with, with people like that. So you don't have to be on an actual phone. You can just listen to content. But you can find lots of uh, videos and just listen to them. Can you do a live stream in a Zoom? Just curious. Uh, I would probably not do that, um, but these are perfectly fine for me. Again, like you, like you getting to speak with me is not going to help you get fluent any more than you being able to speak by yourself. All right? The thing is like understanding like a native. And when you can do that, that's when you speak. All right, hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you're late to the video, you can go back. I will make it available. Uh, but you can also just visit us at EnglishAnyone.com. You can click on the links in the description below this video, learn more about Fluent for Life, learn more about Frederick. And remember, you have to understand like a native. You need to get naturally varied review. You need to hear these things again and again in different ways until you really get them, and then you move on to the next thing. Grant says, thank you so much. That's a good way to end it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.